Let us now discuss the famous 19th century American novel, The Wide Wide World, written by Susan Warner. The novel, The Wide Wide World, is one of the most widely read American novel of the 19th century. It established Susan Warner as the nation's preeminent sentimentalist, sentimental novelist. Bearing Warner's pseudonym, Elizabeth Wetherill, the novel spawned a series of similar works published by the author of The Wide Wide World, a contrivance that would that allowed uh, Warner as one of America's first best-selling writers to largely maintain her anonymity. Noted for its accurate portrayal of the social limitations imposed upon 19th century women, the wide wide world traces the maturation of a young girl, Ellen Montgomery, from childhood to adolescence. Though generally valued less uh, for its literary merit than for its historical significance, the work is considered one of the earliest examples of the domestic novel, a genre focused on the lives of ordinary women that became extremely fashionable after 1850. Frequently dismissed by the majority of 20th century critics as overly sentimental, the novel was rediscovered more than a century after its first publication by feminist scholars who have begun the process of evaluating it as an outstanding, if long since marginalized, example of popular literature written by women. Uh, now, uh, let us have a look on the biographical information of the writer, Susan Warner. Born in New York City in 1819, Warner was the daughter of a prominent and ambitious lawyer, Henry Whiting Warner. Educated by private tutors, she studied literature, music, French, and Italian. In 1828, her mother died, and her paternal aunt moved into the household to care for Warner and her younger sister, Anna. Her father's successful investments in real estate enabled the family to move several times to successively more affluent neighborhoods, and Warner frequently attended fashionable social gatherings as a young woman. However, an economic downturn in 1837 forced the uh, family to retreat from their mansion at St. Mark's Place to an old farmhouse on Constitution Island. During the next 10 years, her father's failing law practice and uh, his involvement in several lawsuits over his property furthered the family's financial difficulties. In 1848, urged by her aunt, Warner began work on the novel The Wide Wide World with the hope that the novel would serve as a source of income. After being rejected by several publishers, the Wide Wide World was issued in a limited edition in 1850. Demand for the book exceeded the initial expectations of the publisher. Reissued through 14 editions in the next two years, the Wide Wide World established an unprecedented record for sales. Encouraged by the success of her first novel, Warner wrote Queen Chi, <coughs> in 1852. Another novel portraying the development of a young girl. Throughout the next three and a half decades, Warner remained on Constitution Island and continued writing, producing more than 30 works of her own and six in collaboration with her sister Anna. None of Warner's subsequent novels, however, achieved the same level of popular success as The Wide Wide World which remained in print for almost 80 years and was widely translated. In, 80, in 1987, after decades of public neglect, the novel was reissued by the feminist press in an enlarged edition that featured a concluding chapter 
written by Warner, but dropped by her original publisher. At the beginning of the wide, wide world, young Helen Montgomery's father has lost a lawsuit and the family doctor has prescribed a vacation for Ellen's severely ill mother because of uh, the family's limited resources. Her father, the unfeeling Captain Montgomery, decides to leave Ellen with her aunt in a small rural village with, while taking his wife on a business trip to Europe. Thank you.